In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about string grids, and this is a part of the Information Technology Grade 12 CAP syllabus. Now, string grids is what you would ideally use as a special component in Delphi that you would use to display some sort of data in the form of a table. And the reason why we have this under the array section is because in our next video, we're going to show you a two-dimensional array, which is an array which follows a very table-like format. And this string grid is probably the best component to display a 2D array. So we're going to first look at string grids and how do we use them and then we'll look at how do we make 2D arrays and use them in string grids in our next video. So the first thing is we've got to find out where the string grids are. We, if you go to your tool palette over here under additional, if you go all the way down you might see something that looks like a string grid. There it is. T string grid. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click on my form. And so here you can see your string grid. You can see it's uh, got rows and columns over there. Um, all the properties of the string grid over here. First of all, it's a very good idea to rename it. So I'm going to call it string grid data, SGD data. So that's a nice name so we can use our string grid. Now, if we look at the string grid, it takes in a whole bunch of strings. Before we start using code to manipulate data into the string grid, let's first look at the properties and how we can set up our string grid so that it's, it can contain the stuff that we want to contain. First of all, you'll notice these shaded columns over here. If you notice these shaded columns, those are what we call the fixed columns and fixed rows. Now, at the moment, there's one fixed row and one fixed column. There may be a time where you've got two rows at the top where you want to put headings. That's where you would ideally use your fixed rows and fixed columns, where you've got some sort of headings or labels for the data that's in the middle. So if we go to the string grid and we go to the fixed properties over here, you can see fixed rows and fixed columns. If I wanted two fixed rows, then I would just go to fixed rows, there we go, and change it to a two, and you will see that the first two rows are now shaded. Sometimes you'll be in a situation where you've got no column headings, you just got headings at the top of your table. In that case, if I change this back to a 1, um, if we change our col columns, fixed columns, to 0, then you've got just the top row shaded. Now, for our scenario, I'm just going to have both of them shaded so that we have one fixed column and one fixed row. Next thing we must look at is how many columns and rows do we want. So if I go down, let's go all the way down to, there we go, row count. That tells me how many rows there are, and that includes the fixed rows. So if you are going to have a set of 10 columns with data in it, and you want a column with a heading, then you need 11 columns. Uh, if you, and the same for rows. If you want 10 rows, but one row at the beyond that with the headings, then you need 11 rows. Uh, row. So it depends on what you want. I'm going to keep it as 5 by 5, so I can just keep it nice and simple. So there we go, 5, and you can see cold count is also 5, so there we go, we can keep it nice and simple. Actually, let's make it 10, by 10, just to make it look a little bit bigger. There's the row count, all the way down here to row count, and I want to make row count 10 as well. It keeps jumping on me, I don't know why that's doing that. Okay, there we go row count and there we go it's 10 now you'll notice it's quite big and it's not fitting into um, my, my form here I can make it obviously a bit bigger to fit everything in I'm going to put numbers in there and that, as you'll probably notice that's a lot of space for a number what you can also do is you can come to the width and change the width of the column there's the default column width uh, if I change that to a smaller number say let's make it 40 then you'll notice all my columns have gotten a lot smaller now so that way we can keep it. You can probably do the same for the rows as well, but that's a lot nicer to display all my data. So there we go. We've set up our string grid. Now I'm going to put some data into it. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the headings in. And I want those headings to appear the moment this form gets created. So I'm going to double click on the form to get to the part of the code, the event handler, for when the form gets created. Now I could put the values in. I'm going to use a for loop because it's going to make my life a lot easier. Before I get to these details, I need to explain to you um, the, the property that we're going to use to put the values into the string grid. So if I type in string grid data, the property is the cells property. And you'll notice there's a square bracket and then we need the column value and the row value. The way I remember it is just alphabetical order. First the column, then the row. 
So I need some sort of column variable or column value and some sort of row value. And that must equal some sort of string. Now let me explain how those num the numbering system works. If I go back to the string grid, that little block over there that I'm pointing at, that is column 0 and row 0. Okay, so that's 0, comma 0. So just like you would for radio groups and list boxes, the first element starts at 0. So you can guess this one over here, this one is column 1, but still row 0. Okay, so you got that. So let me ask you, what is this one over here? Can you guess? Think about it. Okay, let's work it out. That one over there, it's column or it's columns 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's column 4. And the row is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 4, 5. I'm hoping I'm pointing to the same one every time. I think it's that one. So there we go. So that you, you can see it starts at 0 and moves onwards. Same with the column, same with the row. So if I want to put headings in this row over here, each value of the column will change, but the row will always stay the main row, which is the first row, which is row zero. So what I'm going to do in my code, on my form create, I'm going to insert values. I'm going to create a for loop for r equals 1 to 10. And in column r, which is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and row zero, I want you to put the value R. So it's going to take, R is going to be a 1 first. Let me just uh, put it there so it looks nice. R, R is going to be a 1 first. So in column 1, row 0, it's going to put a 1. Then when R becomes a 2, in column 2, it's going to put a 2. Now you'll notice because we're starting at 1, column 1, we are not going to have any value in there. It's going to start over here. Sometimes when you've got a row and a column fixed row and fixed column sometimes you don't need any data in that first one that naught naught one so i want one two three four in there and the problem with this code is going to give me an error and the reason for this is if you remember this is a string grid okay a string grid so the data that goes into these cells must be strings i is an integer so obviously i'll have to do some sort of conversion from an int to a string whoa all the way down to the bottom there we go. Now it should work. And there you go. You can see all the numbers up until, ooh, why, why, can anyone tell me why my 10 is not being displayed? Okay, because I'm displaying 10, but if you remember correctly, I've put my column count and my row count to 10, which means the first one's zero and it goes up until nine. So technically, if I want a row and a column heading as well as a row from one to 10, then I'm going to have to change my column count and my row count. Where is column count? Uh, click on the string grid. We go down to column count. Where, there it is. That should actually be an 11. And if I go to row count, that should also be an 11. If it would stop jumping around, that would be great. There we go. Okay, we'll make this just a little bit bigger. Just so that it fits in nicely. There we go. Okay. So now if I run it, you can see 1 to 10. Okay, we can make this even bigger. Just so the data fits in nicely. There we go. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the column. The first column, we're going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm actually going to just copy this code because I can use the for loop again because I'm using it independently. But instead of in column, R, we're going to, in the first column, column 0, we're going to put the R value. Not the 1, the R value. So in column 0, row 1, and then row 2, and then row 3, we are then going to put values down the side here. Okay. Everyone happy? There we go. Now, you wouldn't really do major calculations with values inside the string grid. You would normally keep that to the array. 
that you are using your 2D array. But just for now, this example, while we're with string grids, I'm just going to show you some things that you can do. I'm going to, I've added a button over here, and what I want to do is I want to add random, or I'm going to add numbers to this string grid. And what I wanted to do, if we ran the program, what I'm basically going to do is I want the value in this cell to be whatever its column heading is multiplied by its row heading. Okay, so in this case, the value in there should be a 6 because it's 3 times 6. And the value in this cell should be 4 times about 6 and so on. So that's what I want to do. So let's run, do that program. We're not going to use any 2D arrays for this. We're just using simple little for loops. Now, whenever you're using string grids or 2D arrays, you are going to be using nested for loops. One that covers the rows and one that covers the columns. So what I'm going to do, and it's probably a good idea, I'm going to call my for loop variables r call and r row, just so that I'm aware of which one's the row value, which one's the um, column value. So they are type integer. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have a for loop that goes from r call, that goes from 1 to 10. Do, and then we will have it nested, so it's for r row goes from 1 to 10 do so this is a nested row so if when column our call becomes a 1 it will then go r row 1 2 3 4 5 up until 10 and then it'll pop back up here to column will be a 2 and it'll go do again row 1 2 up until 10 so that's how a nested for loop works and in my nested for loop all I'm going to do is I'm saying my string grid data dot cells now we're going to first put in the column value, then the row value is going to equal whatever that R col value is multiplied by R row. There we go, just to make it look pretty. Now this is going to return some sort of integer, and remember this is a string grid, so I should convert it from a int to a string. And there we go. So let's run that and see what it looks like. Hopefully there are no errors. There we go. When I click on the button, there we go. So 10 times about 10 is 100. And 6 times about 4 is 24. So there we have a nice grid, like a multiplication type grid. So you can see all the two, there's your, multi, your two times table, there's your three times table. So you've got a nice little time table here. Okay, so that's how you can do data and calculations if you want to display stuff in a string grid. You are going to have to use a nested for loop. One for the columns and one for the rows. For more videos on arrays and objects and all those types of things to do with Delphi and some cat videos as well, please go to our YouTube channel. There you can see the address. Um, subscribe, leave comments. We'd love to hear from you. And also you can go to our Twitter account, follow us, and then you can keep up to date whenever we upload new, new videos. And always remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way. More examples on string grids are available from the Study Opportunities Delphi eNotes, which are available in 2014. A textbook for all the IT grade 12 capsules will be available in 2015. If your teacher is interested, then contact them on their website for more details.